In this short video, we're going to look at a few tips and tricks we can use when working with the CAM Manager tree in HSM Works and HSM Express. To demonstrate the concepts, we'll use this simple part that I have on my screen. I want you to start by noting that I've not yet created a job for this part, but I'm still going to go directly to 2D Milling and select Face. From the library, I can pick a facing tool and select OK. What's happened here is we've automatically created a facing operation, but more importantly, we also automatically created the job. In the job, we defined a rough stock body to machine the part from, the part model we're actually machining, and the datum that we're going to use when we machine the part. Of course, any of these settings can be changed by simply right-clicking the job and selecting Edit. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add a contouring operation around the outside of the part. This time I'm going to add the operation by right-clicking on the feature tree and selecting New Operation. We'll simply find the operation we want, again in this case 2D Contour. Now from the library, I'll pick the tool that I want to use. I can move to the Geometry tab and select the chain that I want to contour around and finish by going to the Passes tab and adding a Finish Pass. I can select OK and my contouring operation is completed around the outside of the part. So that completes this side of the part. Now let's move on to some of the tips and tricks we have for duplicating these operations on the back side of the part. I'll simply flip the part over and let's get to work. Instead of recreating the facing operation and creating a new job, instead we can right click the job on the feature tree and select duplicate. You'll also note that we could use control D as a keyboard shortcut to duplicate either jobs or operations. Once I've duplicated the job, we need to right click that job and select make default folder. Again, keyboard shortcut being shift D. Now that folder is turned bold and that indicates any new operations we produce are going to happen inside of this job. Now we've got a facing operation that's still on the back side of the part because we just duplicated the same job in the same setup. What we need to do is right click the job and select edit and simply move down to the working coordinate system section and redefine the face that sets the z-axis. So now we've reorientated the part, we can select OK and our facing operation is ready to be regenerated. Now I do know I don't need to contour around the outside of the part again so I can just select that operation and hit delete on my keyboard to go ahead and delete it. Very simple to duplicate operations, just as simple to delete them. Let's regenerate this facing operation, and it's now on the correct side of the part. Again, very simple. So the next thing we need to do is rough out the inside of this part. Let's select 2D Milling and 2D Adaptive Clearing. From my library, I can pick my tool, and from the Geometry tab, I can select the geometry that I want to machine. I'm going to move to the Passes tab and turn off the stock to leave on the bottom or the floor because we just want to finish up the wall with a later contouring operation. I'll select OK and my roughing operation is completed. Now, here's the next trick. Instead of producing a new contouring operation to finish that wall, I'm simply going to right click the Adaptive Clearing operation Select Create Derived Operation, 2D Milling, and 2D Contour. This is going to produce a new operation using the same geometry and same tool. All I need to do is go to the Passes tab and turn off my stock to leave. I'll select OK, and I've very quickly created a finishing operation for that same set of geometry. Now let's say you wanted to do this again sometime rough a part out, and then finish the wall with a contouring operation. That's simple as well. Select both operations, right click, and select Store as Template. This allows us to create a template, we could call it Rough-Finish, and save it. And anytime we wanted to use this same set of operations in the future, we'd simply right click and select Create from Template. I have my rough finish operation, and I can either create just the roughing or contouring operation or both of them together. So here we have our roughing and contouring operation. 
And now, of course, we need to redefine our geometry. But again, that's simple. Simply right click, select the geometry tab, and pick the outer chain this time. In this case, I'm machining on the outside of the chain, so I'll unselect machine cavities and select OK. So I've got my roughing operation, and I would generally have to go ahead and reselect the geometry for the contour as well. But here's another quick trick. If I hold Shift down and drag and drop the roughing operation onto the contouring operation, we're going to copy any compatible geometry between the two operations. I can click OK, and the contouring operation regenerates to finish that part. So we very quickly duplicated an operation, and now we've roughed and finished the outside of the part. Let's say we wanted to complete both of the roughing operations before the finishing operations. To reorder the operations, simply drag and drop them on the feature tree. Alternatively, you can hold Alt and use the arrow keys. Now let's say, for example, we wanted to change the tool that we were using for our finishing operations. You can right-click it and select Edit. And of course, go to the library and pick a new tool. But instead of having to go through that same process on the second operation, simply expand both operations, select them on the feature tree, and shift drag the tool onto the next operation. We can see we've instantly applied this tool to the new operation, and it simply needs to be regenerated. So not only can we copy compatible geometry between operations, we can also copy tools between operations. With these operations expanded, there's another tip that I want to show you on the operation tree. Let's go ahead and expand out the roughing operation on the outside of the part and take a look at the size of the code that's going to be produced for this particular operation. This is helpful because on many older machines, the block processing speed is so slow that we end up with what we call data starvation. The machine is capable of moving faster than it's capable of interpreting the G-codes. So if we can reduce the size of the code, we're going to limit the amount of data starvation that happens. So let's remember this number, it's 16.5 KB. I'm simply going to right click the operation and select edit, move to my passes tab and turn on smoothing. Smoothing is going to lay arcs through a series of short line moves, effectively reducing the amount of code it takes to machine the part. We can click OK and the toolpath regenerates. And now we can see we've brought the code size down to 11.4. So we very quickly got a reference point before we even post any code as to how large that particular operation is going to be. Another nice little trick with the cam manager tree. Now the last trick I'd like to show you is how we can copy and paste jobs and operations between part files. So I'll simply control select both of the jobs, select copy, and then control tab over to another part that I have open in SolidWorks. I can move to its cam manager tree and right click to paste the jobs. All I have to do is redefine the model that's being machined for each job. So I'll select my model and click OK. You can regenerate this job and the facing and contouring operations have automatically updated. On the back side, I'll do the same. In this case, I have to redefine the model, and I also have to redefine the orientation. So I'll move down to my working coordinate system and select the face that's going to define the z-axis. I can click OK, and again, regenerate. Now in this case, only the facing operation automatically updated because it's the only operation that had similar geometry to the last part. At the same time, we don't need one of the roughing and one of the finishing operations. So again, remember, we can simply select them on the feature tree and click the delete key on our keyboard. Now let's reselect our geometry, moving to the geometry tab and selecting those chains that we want to machine and then clicking OK. Of course, if I shift drag this operation onto my contour, I'm quickly going to copy that compatible geometry and my finishing operation is very quickly reproduced. So in a matter of a few seconds, I've reprogrammed a part that's similar, but at the same time, very different. I hope these few tips and tricks that I've shown you with the HSM Works and HSM Express CAM Manager tree are going to help you program your parts faster and more efficiently.